Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Check it out, it's the Autel Evo. This has been around for about six months. I did a review on this way back when it first came out, actually a few videos, and they've gone through a bunch of updates. So I wanted to see um, some of the differences it had in actual real time flying with you. I'm gonna record the screen on my Android. I got the new uh, OnePlus 6T phone. Autel app seems to work on here. Got fully charged batteries. So we're gonna go through some of the features and we're gonna test some things that were a little bit lacking when it first came out six months ago and see how they perform now. Let's get started. With Autel, what you need to do is once you go into uh, the beginning of the app, if you wait 60 seconds on this screen, it tells you on the bottom if you need to do an update or if you want to do an update. You're not required. That's the cool thing about Autel is no no fly zones and there are no forced updates. So you can do whatever you want. It's been about 60 seconds and I'm seeing nothing pop up. So we'll go into the Go Fly here. And we want to launch right away. We're recording in 4K, 60 frames per second. Now that's one of the advantages over the Mavic 2 Pro. Those ones don't have any 60 frame per second options in 4K. And that's what's so cool about the Evo, is it is does seem to be a good option if you're looking at something besides uh, the Mavic. So we'll start recording. This is gonna be 4K, 60 frames per second. Maybe we'll do some slow-mo. This should be better at precision landing. It should be better at circling around point without, remember in the first part, couple reviews, it kind of had that hedge rock when we did the circle around. So, and then they also have that um, ludicrous boat where you can go up to 45 miles per hour. So those are the main three things I wanna test right now. So you do have to hold down and in to start the motors on this one first and then we're gonna be able to take off. So just pushing takeoff, push and hold. I'm seeing a blue bar come up on the screen. And there we go. So that's it hovering there. Um, I just did another test on the Mavic 2 Pro today. And there is, you can see the tree in the background there, kind of blowing. The wind is coming from that direction. Once we get up, it's gonna be more. It's about five to 10, probably gusting up there, maybe 15 to 20. And if you remember, that's kind of the same wind I tested my initial tests about six months ago. So we'll see how this is doing. So there we go. So we're hovering very good, very comparable to something like DJI since it does have the optical flow and the uh, sonar senses on the bottom. It's able to see that. We'll go ahead and just give it a good chance and kind of push up kind of like you do with DJI to get about you know 30 feet or more high just to see how the accuracy is. The cool thing about this is as I'm rolling my finger, you see how we have all of these options, my right roller. We have all these options, so I could change that if I wanted to. And then the left roller, just rotating the gimbal down. It's looking really good. I did slow down the gimbal to 50%. So that's the speed there of rotating maximum if you slow your gimbal down to about 50% for more cinematic video. Cool, so let's go right over, first thing, over to this skate park. Oops, there's the map there. Again, this thing does have waypoints and it does have a map, but I do wanna go back into my FPV right there and I'm gonna just kinda of close that map. That's pretty cool how you can close that. So let's go ahead and go over to this skate park and all the while, Making sure everything's going good, okay. Looking good so far. So let's see how we do this. We're gonna do a circle around point right here. Up on the top left, you see that GPS? I believe that's what I need to click, yeah. So there's all of our intelligent flight modes. Can't go anywhere else besides this screen. There's no further screens for this mode. Um, we wanna do the orbit, right? So we'll go into orbit, fly circular patterns around a center point. Okay, it's telling you what to do. And we'll go ahead and finish. We can adjust everything too. So fly above the center point. So not quite as good as something like DJI's kind of triangulation. So I'm rotating the gimbal down. Whoa. Okay, a little fault there. That was interesting when I was going fast. So we'll make this the center point right here. 
and we'll set I want to make sure I'm all the way down we'll set as a or we can press a also on the controller but I'm just gonna press the screen orbit radius so this is where I want to pull back with my right stick and I want to set my radius so we'll go kind of back to about a hundred feet maybe even 200 just to get a more distant cinematic shot and then we'll go set that with that button and we want to just go we'll go counterclockwise you can set that there and start so all right so it's gonna start there it goes starts moving so as you can see um, my camera's down so no type of camera active track with the circle around point for the Evo so I have to manually rotate my camera up and what we're really looking for now guys is we're really trying to see if they've taken out that head shake and this is all just the default speed settings I'm still seeing a little bit of side to side unfortunately just a little it does seem like it's gotten a little better but still not as good as DJI as far as the circle around point that's too bad but um, if that doesn't bother you too much uh, there's some ways afterwards in software to kind of help that a little bit in some post editing so now what we'll do is we will push up I want to gain some altitude you see my altitude I want to go push up and pull back while it's doing this so I'm all the way back and I'm all the way pushing up I want to go to 400 feet so remember I have to move my gimbal down something you don't have to do with DJI so DJI is a little more automated so kind of a comparison here I want to go up just under 400 right about there that looks good and we'll pull the camera down again I'm still pulling back is that moving me at all yeah so that is moving me away from the target 200 feet away on the map it does look like it's making a pretty precise circle it's just that head sway let me see if I can yaw to the right just a little to center it a little better yeah so we can do that too since it's not using like um, optical detection to do this feature right now we can still do that so that's kind of how it looks there that's pretty neat it's working fairly good I just wish they could take out that a little bit of camera sway left to right you guys will have the 4k video on screen to see how that's working but I can already see it a little bit in the FPV I'm gonna rotate the gimbal up and I want to get some nice ocean shots of the view here on Maui as it's rotating now it's a little more pronounced you can see on the horizon how it's moving around left and right it's not just that fluid smooth movement that DJI can get and uh, same wind conditions that I just did my after three month Mavic 2 Pro comparison so I'll have that up on the channel too guys if you want to check that out there we are there we are there's I'm on Maui there's the West Maui mountains looking really nice and if we want to stop this if I just press pause there we go I press pause on the controller and it just stopped there we'll go ahead and we'll exit this just kind of cruising up there right below 400 feet okay canceled by user all right so we're still recording in 60 frames per second in 4k so let's go into ludicrous mode and we'll do a quick flight of that and then we'll do our precision landing all the while looking at our flight time we can also tap on this top bar and check it out we have our signal strength satellites our vision is all enabled I didn't touch anything and there's our voltage on our controller which is 85 percent on the very top you can see our flight time remaining it thinks it's about 16 minutes so let's hurry up and go into this ludicrous mode we need to go in our options and you need to enable this uh, directly from the options here so you see this standard precision okay and ludicrous check this out 
45 miles per hour max. Can't click on the miles per hour or do anything. So we are now in ludicrous mode. We're gonna go full stick forward. Boom. Full stick forward. We are looking at our mile per hour, which is on the very right. Ah, see on the Evo, you do see some propellers. You see them there in the screen. So you're gonna have to rotate the gimbal down a little to get those propellers out of view. Really trying to see, it's losing altitude. You see that? So it lost a little bit of altitude. So it is fluctuating a bit in this mode. Let's see how it works if we turn really hard. Don't want to fly over too many houses. So we'll go back to the park here. With the wind, I'm hitting 45 just about, but against the wind, I could only go up to around 40. I think that was. So anyway, it is working. It is going fast, but it looked like we were dropping altitude a little. Still dropping, letting off here at above my head. There we go. So just right over the park here, there I am. So that takes care of ludicrous. That takes care of the circle around point, point of interest. And we're gonna do the precision landing in just a sec. I did see that other precision mode. I do wanna check that out really fast, okay? So back in the flight control on the menu, precision and close. So I'm gonna bring this guy down, full throttle down in precision. This is great because you can see the mile per hour. It's the same spot, but it's also showing if you go straight down. I like that. So you know how fast you're going down if you needed to. Um, it's kind of combines the lateral and vertical. So coming on down, I'm gonna come back and we're gonna see how this precision mode is. This wasn't enabled in um, my first couple of reviews. So again, more like a tripod that DJI has. So full stick uh, forward now. Let's see how fast it can go. Yeah, four and a half miles per hour. Okay, so very similar to DJI in that respect. While we're at it, let's see if it will run into me. Okay, it detected me. So the um, obstacle detect detection is still working on those sensors in the front, great. That's the yaw rate, look how slow that is. So pretty slow for the tripod modes, for some cinematics. Let's pull back. Um, remember these could detect me, but it wouldn't stop in the first couple of reviews. So still not gonna stop. It's just gonna notify you that there's something behind on the screen. So if you're thinking that it's gonna stop when you back up on the Evo guys, it's not. See that? So it would have run into me. Still good to have that indicator though if you're doing some stuff FPV and you need to know what's around. You won't let me go forward because I'm there. There we go, so the front's working still very good. Looks like they optimized it possibly a little bit. 10 minutes left on flying. What I'd like to know is can I go into the different flight modes while I'm out of the menu? I can't, so maybe something they wanna do is with this roller, go ahead and give it another flight mode option so we can do the click in. There's the zoom by the way. If you guys have never seen the zoom, check that out. This thing has eight times zoom. Of course, it is digital, so it's gonna get blurry the more you zoom in. But kind of a cool option if you were looking at the Mavic 2 zoom, this does that too. If you roll with this, I do want to really see the ability to change those flight modes. I wanna go into Ludicrous, and I just wanna do some fast flyby passes. So you see how that was kind of cumbersome to switch in between these modes? Now we're going fast. Let's just do a couple of minutes here until the battery gets a little low and then we'll do a return to home. So full forward, letting off. Cool. So it does slow itself down really stably. You'll have the um, video up for the 4K. Let's do a close little flyby here. Remember this turns off the sensors too. Wow, on par with DJI guys as far as it's fast mode. That's quick and it stops. Let's see how fast it stops. If I'm just doing this run here, I'm gonna let off right when it gets in front of me, letting off. Looks like it takes about 20 feet to stop. 
And again, guys, that 4K footage will be up. And I'll, maybe I'll have slowed it down a little bit so you can kind of see the 60 FPS. Let's do that again. I'll slow this down. Ready? Nobody behind me. Go. Okay. Ludicrous. Is it fast going up too? We're going to go way down there. So it looks like if you're going uh, horizontally, guys, ludicrous, you're going to lose some altitude. So careful with that. And the propeller is really getting the screen there. I'm going to do a return to home right here. Um, holding in return to home on the controller. Blue bar is going up. I hear a beep. And I think that's going to be it because I want to do a precision landing. So I'll let it come home. We're still in ludicrous mode, remember. So we do want to check um, how fast it's going. 20, 22 and a half coming back. That's kind of the default return to home speed in all modes it looks like, because that's I think that's what it was in its GPS mode. So just rotating the camera, you can do that as it's coming home. And remember, okay, so this is gonna be the test of the precision landing. Let us see how close it gets. Remember, main features from the updates we we're trying out here, as far as what I know of, maybe there's a couple more little ones, but these are the main ones I was concerned about. Rotating the camera, start landing, visual obstacle avoidance is disabled. So same thing kind of DJI does. Accurate landing, correcting landing location. You see that pop up on the screen, cool. So it is doing it just like DJI does. So I launched in that little hexagon with it facing to the left corner of the park and it was, the legs were right inside there, that inner circle. Let's see how it does. Picking the camera up, all the way forward. It's going nice and slow, trying to correct itself. Come on, back up a little bit, you know, back up a little. A little bit off. Pretty precision though. I just did the Mavic 2 test since they enabled their precision landing and the Mavic 2 at least got in the circle both times. So still might be a little bit better with the, um, the DJI on the precision landing. I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll do one more quick launch and we'll do that one more time. If it'll let us. We're getting low on battery power. So just did that manually that time. So I'm gonna go up slowly, let it take some pictures or whatever it needs to do with precision landing. This will be the second test. Okay. And that ludicrous mode kind of scares me since it goes down so fast. So I'm gonna go back into standard mode. Okay. And remember, in standard mode, you can also pick these speeds too. So we can go from 11 to 34. So we'll go up to 34 this time, turn that off, close the screen, and we will just go out. I wanna fly over those people. We'll go out here, go up a bit. Wow, it's still not telling me to return to home. This should have a smart return to home. Looks like it's, oh, there, there we go. So we'll let it do this. It just finally um, detected it's enough battery left to get home, just like DJI does, and it is gonna return to home now. That's great. So another cool feature, we'll close the map. Another cool feature you have um, on this Evo. And we can still adjust the camera. Anyway guys, that's how it is on auto. This camera is actually really good auto out of the box and remember this does 4k and 60 frames per second so that might have been kind of cool just doing that fast flyby we'll see how that looks previously when we did that so this is going to be the final test um, of this video we're just going to do that precision landing one more time rotating the camera all the way down so this does have a pretty good flight time. Uh, I've been seeing, it doesn't say up on the screen now, we gotta go into our uh, log to see the flight time, but um, with this one, I've been seeing like 20 minutes and above, 
I think 23. So, we'll see how long this one is. Okay, doing its precision landing, critically low. Hopefully it's still gonna precision while it's critically low. Picking the gimbal up. It does seem like it's adjusting a little, but it's still off a bit. And I did do a compass calibration, guys, just before I flew this. I did one right on the grass here, so. That's one. That's two and a half, three feet away. So nothing to be, you know, mad about but it's still not quite as good, in my test at least, as the, uh, the Mavic line, the, the DJI more advanced drone line. Even the Air has it, the Spark has it. And those are pretty precision, but you know, I'm not gonna knock these guys too much about that, that's fine. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed that. That was the six months after flight test of the Autel Evo. It does look like it's doing pretty good. We'll just go f over through a few points that we wanted to touch base in the video. Uh, the first one was the circle around point, point of interest. Still not quite there yet with a little bit of side to side sway. You could see that when I went and tried to track that skate park. It was a little bit more prominent in the rotation where we were looking at the horizon. You could kind of see it doing that little bit of shake side to side. So I was hoping they completely ironed that out, but not quite yet. The ludicrous mode was very fast, so a good option if you need that, but it did seem like it was a little getting on the edge of losing its um, altitude, and it was losing altitude a little bit, so be careful with that. Precision landing was good enough. A few feet off, but I'm not gonna knock it much. The first one, it was a little closer. The second one, a little farther away. The flight time also, for that flight, uh, we got up to, you know, a minute and 52 flight time left, it said on its on the controller. I'll have that pop up on the screen if you guys were just interested in that full flight. It was 100% charged battery. We were checking the uh, 4K footage on the camera, seeing how good that was. Slowed down the video a little bit when I was flying by super fast, so you could kind of see the quality on that 4K, at least in this environment. I mean, it's, it's this nice sunny day. It's about 1.30 in the afternoon, and uh, the clouds are not covering the sun right now so that's how it looked in this situation anyway guys if you guys are interested in the evo don't forget i always have the links down in the description of my video and i really hope you enjoyed that cool little quick test uh six months later i don't know if it was quick but it was definitely pretty thorough didn't go through all the functions but those are the main ones i wanted to test that i knew were different and we're hoping were improved thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one